I'm here with Jason Harper. We actually got connected through Tim Kaufman, and we have a mutual friend through Josh Lajani. He actually lives just down the road from me and has lost 100 pounds, uh, actually over 100 pounds. So Jason, thanks for the time, and uh, maybe we could just start off with uh, where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Well, originally uh, born and raised in Pennsylvania, uh, just north of Philadelphia area, and uh, grew up there um, and moved uh, to South Louisiana. I live uh, not far from Thibodeau. Uh, moved here in uh, 98. Uh, so I have been here since. My wife is from here. Uh, we met in college. Um, so when I finished college, uh, I moved down here and I've been here since. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how deep deep uh, you want to go uh, in, in the intro. Um, but that I mean, that's, that's how I ended up here. Uh, basically, uh, two food capitals of the United States, uh, Pennsylvania, Philly area, New Orleans. So, uh, you know, that's, it was, it was two great places for me to be at least for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I know that you said in a message to me that you were over, you were always overweight, even as a child. Yeah. And when you were talking about food, you said we ate comfort food. We yes. had unhealthy treats all the time. Uh, what was your expectation of food growing up? Well, uh, yeah, and I told you a little bit about that, but growing up, um, I came from a single parent home, uh, so we didn't have a lot of money. Our, our meals were not extravagant, uh, but what my mom did make was hearty kind of comfort food type stuff, uh, you know, and stuff that was affordable. So we ate a lot of uh, rice, uh, meals, um, you know, pastas, potatoes, uh, and my mom was a great cook, so you know, she could throw together things that, um, you know, were relatively cost effective, but could feed me and my brother and my sister, you know, relatively cheap. So she did her best to give us as much food uh, as possible and still kind of keep it affordable. So she was always, you know, giving us delicious, highly starchy uh, in bulk amounts as much as we could get. But she that was, you know, I don't know really without getting too psychological about, it, I don't know if it was compensation for other things that we didn't have, but we always had good food. Um, it wasn't like, it wasn't fancy food. We didn't eat a lot of steaks and things like that, but, uh, you know, we always had, had, uh, food around the house and, and she was a great cook. So she wanted us to eat as much as we wanted. Yeah. And I think, I, th I think you said, you know, that, um, that your dad was a big guy. I think you actually said he was a, he was a mountain of a man and you yes. always looked up to him. So, you know, how did him being a bigger guy kind of inform what you had as an expectation of what you would be like? Well, and, and it was pretty evident early on. I'm six foot three and uh, he was six foot four. I never quite caught him, but uh, he was always the biggest guy in the crowd. Uh, all of his friends were normal sized guys, but he was six foot four and me growing up, he probably was close to 300 pounds most of my life. And um, so growing up, you know, I knew I was going to kind of be a big guy. And I loved the fact that, you know, he was held in high esteem because he was the big guy. Uh, you know, people didn't mess with my dad. You know, he, he lived kind of a crazy lifestyle. He was uh, he spent time in the bars and things like that. But my dad was a gentle giant. I don't know that he's ever gotten, well, he had ever gotten into a fist fight uh, in his life just because of his sheer size. Um, but, you know, I, I looked up to him because he was the guy that everyone loved. He was just that lovable big dude that kind of everyone knows. And I wanted to be that guy. And, you know, I, I kind of ended up being that guy. Yeah, I think, you know, it sounds like where you grew up, um, as you said before, and also as you messaged me, unhealthy food was pretty common. You said, you know, being a northerner, especially living in the Philadelphia area, we had a rich history of delicious, extremely unhealthy foods. The world's best pizza, stromboli, Philly cheesesteaks, hoagies, scrapple, yeah. pierogies, meat, meat, and more meat. I grew up worshipping these delicious foods as everyone else did. I yeah. didn't know anyone else that ate salads. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that true? I, I, I mean, you, you didn't eat any salads? No, I don't. I do not remember eating a single salad growing up. That like lettuce and tomatoes. That was kind of fancy food. At, you know, at my house. You know, we uh, we didn't. I don't remember eating salads at all ever growing up. I think probably the first salad I ever had was when I went to college. 
Wow. So, yeah, I that just, you know, these rich Italian foods that, that you know, just permeate that area and that is famous for. Um, people go to Philadelphia to eat the food because um, it's it's good and it's it's not good for you, but it's delicious food. Um, so that I mean, we grew up eat, eating that kind of stuff. That was, you know, that was the treat food a, a meatball sub, you know, foot long, just doused with meat sauce and meatballs and, you know, cheese, ch- cheese running all over the place on a cheese steak. I mean, that was that was high living where I was from. Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, it sounded like high school, college is kind of where you really began to pack on the pounds. Um, what what changed there? What happened? What what led to that? You know, was there anything that were there any switches that changed either for yourself or just, you know, kind of in life? Well, um, I was an active kid when I was growing up. I, you know, just like a lot of guys from, you know, my era, we spent all day outside, you know, and as a kid from the time the sun came up till it went down pretty much, we were not allowed inside. So we were riding bikes, we were playing tag, we were, and we went all over the town and my mom never worried. So I was an active kid, although I was always a little pudgy. Um, I never was a skinny kid. I was active, but kind of as the years went on and I got closer to like high school, you know, that was the era of the video game, you know, kids became a little more sedentary. My friends weren't really outdoorsmen type guys uh you know we, we just we started playing a lot of video games instead of riding bikes which kept us inside uh and then college kind of the same deal you know i wasn't um we my college was kind of in the middle of nowhere it was in amish country in pennsylvania uh so there wasn't a lot of stuff to do uh on campus so we sat around we ate cheese steaks and pizza you know uh late at night and things like that stuff that was definitely not healthy Um, and I didn't do much other than studying work. So, you know, the, the lack of physical activity paired with probably increased amounts of food, uh, especially in college, because you can almost eat as much as you want. You, you go to the cafeteria and you can have as many servings as you want of whatever. Uh, you know, there was pizza places you could get a pizza for five bucks. So it wasn't rare to eat a whole pizza for five bucks, you know? So, I mean, the, the unhealthy food was there in, in bulk. And then, you know, I wasn't, I really wasn't doing much of anything as far as physical activity. Uh, so that, that just kind of started snowballing on me and caught up to me really kind of in young adulthood. Yeah. And I know, um, I know it, you know, at some point you said that your dad was diagnosed with diabetes and it kind of made you take a hard look at your own weight. Um, right. did, can you talk about that? And did that cause you to really, you know, make any changes? Yeah. You know, he, when he, uh, when he got diabetes, uh, you know, it was kind of a wake up call because here was this mountain of a man, my hero growing up and kind of, kind of invincible because he was a big dude. Uh, you know, and here he was with a fairly serious illness. Um, and, uh, so it kind of, for the first time, you know, it was, it was a, a wake up call for me that, you know, I want to be this big dude. I am the big guy now. Um, I, I took my father's role and, uh, but my dad wasn't foul, uh, infallible. You know, he, he was susceptible to these things and all of this hard living and, you know, lack of dietary control now in his later life is caught up to him. And, um, you know, it kind of made me take a look at, at what I was doing and I was still in college when that happened. So, you know, for the first time, I actually did seek out some physical activity. Um, Some friends of mine in college, in my group of friends, started like a little running club at night. That was my first introduction to running. And we would go at night, you know, eight o'clock ish, and we'd run around the campus. So I actually, for the first time in my life, started consciously taking a look at, you know, my physical activities and, and, uh, you know, what I really should be doing, although it really didn't, it it didn't change me. Obviously I, you know, I I still had the bad habits, uh, but it was, it was the foundation for me as far as kind of realizing that, you know, these actions, eating this food and being sedentary 
uh, will have some consequences down the road. So you're in college and, um, you know, you have all this going on, but I know at some point you got up to 350 pounds. So how long was it between your college days and the road to, you know, your biggest? Well, uh, like I said, I moved here in 98 and I was, I was still a fairly got big guy, uh, that the whole running thing in college, it, it kind of came and went, wasn't, it wasn't a thing that really facilitated me losing a bunch of weight and got me all skinny or anything. Um, although, you know, I was, I was doing fairly well and, you know, with that, but it just kind of, you slide back. That's the habit of, of, a of a food addict. A lot of times is, uh, you know, you just fall back in the old habits. So I moved here in 98 and, uh, it, it kind of was a slow, gradual kind of building up of the, uh, of the weight. Um, I, I got a, a, a graphic design job in 2000, and that was a desk job, which was probably the worst thing that could have happened to me. Uh, I sat at a desk uh, and snacked on food. Uh, so I would say, you know, between when I moved here in 98, probably by about 2002, I had probably gone from about 250, 260 pounds in college around there. And I probably had packed on probably 90 to 100 pounds within three years, four years. Um, yeah, was, that's that's kind of where the, the morbid obesity really started. Wow. And what you know, what was life like back then? Did you have um, any you know struggles or any things that were that were harder to do, or you know, do you have any um, medical things going on? Amazingly, and I have been abundantly blessed that I have never had a serious illness related to my weight gain. I've never had high blood pressure. Uh, I've never had uh, any kind of, um, you know, not, not even, any heart, heart issues or anything like that. I've had some things that I thought maybe might be, um, you know, there was an issue at one point where, uh, you know, I had kind of racing heart, went through all the checks, nothing was wrong. It was, it was kind of like uh, an isolated episode, but uh, amazingly, and, and by the grace of God really is all I can and uh, give it to, is that I, I never had anything that, that was a consequence of the weight, uh, as far as medically. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't barely walk any kind of distance. Going anywhere that required walking was really a chore. Um, I, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't active. Uh, I didn't seek out activities that, uh, would have me on my feet for long periods of time at that point. Um, you know, I'd go home and watch TV and eat and things like that. So, um, activity just wasn't a part of my life, but, uh, I mean, miraculously, I, I never suffered uh, medically because of it. Now, I know at some point, you know, you, you, you moved down to Louisiana, you get married, I believe you have some kids. Was, was your weight ever a conversation or a concern, you know, with your wife in terms of your, you know, from a health perspective or anything like it, that? It was because we both come from fairly unhealthy families, uh, historically, um, you know, my, my grandfather died of heart disease. My father eventually died of heart disease at 65. My wife's father died uh, of heart disease, uh, of a heart attack in his forties. Um, so we knew what, what the consequences would be and having kids kind of narrowed that focus and the consequences. Now, if it was just me and, and I died, you know, people would be sad, but you know, life moves on. But now, you know, when you have responsibilities to kids, which was, it's all I ever wanted in life was to have kids. And when they came, you're responsible to them now. Um, and even then, just as a food addict, you realize what, you're, what the consequences would be, but it still doesn't, it's hard to set that in um, and really kind of make it a catalyst for, for any kind of big change. Um, I became more aware of it and I became more aware of my weight and what the future consequences would be. But, you know, I was still a big guy. Uh, my, my weight now 
when when I started uh, having when we had kids, we had twins, and uh, but I started kind of that's when the the severe yo yoing started going. I'd lost at one point seventy something pounds, packed it back on, lost sixty something pounds again. So I I started trying at least you know the effort then was there. It never stuck though. But yeah, having kids, uh, you know, we discussed really what. And we both knew, really, honestly, having both lost our parents, we knew what the ultimate consequence was. But we became a little more acutely aware of what we were doing to ourselves and, and ultimately what, what the consequences would be. And I think you mentioned to me, you know, that it sounded like you had a, a turning point or, a, you know, something, a, a real recognizable place that you call the photo um, <laughs> yeah, where, where things kind of change for you. W- would you mind sharing that story? Yes, yes. That that was the turning point, and it saved my life. Uh, without being o- overly dramatic, this one picture literally saved my life. Um, I, I I'm a I'm a hobbyist photographer. I do you know I assist with uh, um, a, a photographer buddy of mine uh, on some photo shoots, and I do it myself uh, from time to time. So I'm, I've always kind of been behind the camera. Rarely have pictures been taken of me. I have a couple of me that I use as kind of comparisons on Instagram, things like that. But there aren't many um, just because I was used to being the one with the camera. Um, but my youngest son was graduating uh, from daycare. And uh, this was a, this was last year. Um, I'm, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was 2000. Yes, it was 2015. Yes. And uh, it was May of last year and he was graduating daycare and we were having pictures taken and the the woman that owned the daycare took a picture of me holding my youngest son. And I had always kind of had, I don't know if I explained it in, in that little email I sent to you, but I've always had like a reverse body dysmorphic disorder type thing where some people see themselves and think, oh, man, I could lose a couple pounds, when in reality, man, eh, you probably don't really need to lose that much weight. But I always saw myself and said, well, I got a couple pounds to lose, but it's not that bad. You know, I'm I'm a big guy. I know that. And I, you know, I could afford to lose a couple pounds, but I never really saw myself as that big until I saw the picture. And she took a picture of me, and I was almost unrecognizable to myself. I was that big. And at that point, I real it, it was it was like that 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 switch got flipped literally in my mind, and I said I have to regain control of my life or prepare to die young. I it, I knew it had to happen, and I'd never seen a picture of me in that kind of desperate situation as far as my weight goes. Um, but uh, I mean, from that point, literally, when I saw that picture. I told my wife, I said, I, this is it. I have to get it under control. It has to change for good at this point because I don't want to leave my kids and miss all the important things in their life. And that's the, that is literally the road I was headed for. Um, with my grandfather dying uh, in his 40s of heart disease, I knew it wasn't out of the realm of possibility because I'm 44. Uh it was not out of the realm of possibility that I could die really young. And, uh, so that was, that really was the, the flipping of the switch that, that, uh, that really got me going. Wow. So that happens. You see the picture. What does the next day look like? What does the next week look like? What does the next month look like? Like, what did you, you know, I know mentally it, you, like you said, it flipped a switch, but practically yeah. what did you do about that? So, I've always had a lot of luck with uh, a low carb diet. That anytime I lost a considerable amount of weight, uh, it was doing low carb, and I knew I could be successful doing that as far as dropping the weight. So that's what I did. Almost immediately, I switched back to a low carb diet, and uh, that was kind of the go to for me. I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't know the uh, the science behind it. I didn't know the nutritional facts behind what it did. I just knew that it worked. And uh, so that's what I did. I switched to low carb diet. And uh, over the years when I had been yo-yo doing the yo-yo thing, um, 
I had run started. I, I'd run for a while. I'd lose the weight and then just kind of fall off. So I got back to the running and, uh, because that's the one physical activity that I knew that I enjoyed more than anything else. I've never been a gym guy, much of a gym guy, although I have a longer gyms. Um, uh, I just, I started running and it's something also that you can do any time of the day, really. Uh, you know, you don't need a whole lot of equipment and stuff like that. It was readily available and I could start right away. So I started walking really cause I was in, you know, I was in the three fifties probably at that point. So I wasn't doing a whole lot of running at that point, but I did start walking again. Um, and then I, I got to the low carb diet, but, um, you know, over the next several, probably month or two, I really, you know, kind of started assessing what am I doing here? Like if this is going to be a long-term fix, it can't just be low carb and that's it for the rest of my life. Cause that it's not feasible really, at least for most people, I guess, I mean, some people can stick to it for years, but I knew that it always led to a fallback to junk foods and stuff like that. Because it really does allow you to eat a whole lot of stuff that's really shouldn't be on your plate, you know, at, on a regular basis. And everyone knows that. So, but, but it always led to, uh, you know, the, the chips and, you know, the little cheats here and there that ultimately lead you to failure. Um, so I, you know, in assessing that I had to, to figure out what are these, what are these foods doing for me? And if this isn't going to be a long-term successful path, what is going to be the long-term successful path? So over the next couple of months, um, I really started researching for the first time what food did to me and for me. And, uh, and I had some, you know, I had uh, a conversation, a lunch uh, conversation with a buddy named Dan Kabarak and, um, who really kind of he uh, he was he was a true friend when a lot of people won't step up and say you need to get control of your life. It's hard to have that conversation with a person that's morbidly obese. It really is to tell them I care about you, you know, and I don't want you to die young. And he didn't use those words specifically, but he uh, he lovingly pushed me to learn more about what I was eating. He had, uh, he was another guy that was a very big guy and, uh, but he had taken on a vegan diet and had lost a, a, a large amount of weight. I, I don't know exactly where he's at, but it may be over a hundred pounds or more himself. And, uh, you know, we had that, we had a lunch date and he, uh, he kind of explained to me what he eats and what it was doing and kind of pointed me in a direction. And, and at that point he also told me, you need to get connected with this guy, Josh Johnny. And, um, that's kind of where I, I hooked up with Josh. Uh, and then between those two, I, I started getting more, uh, nutritional information than I'd ever gotten in my life. So it really became a priority for me to learn about food not just guess about what's going to work and why, but I, I purposely started learning about what I was eating, why it's healthy or unhealthy. And, you know, what for the things that I'm predisposed to as far as medically, um, what are the things that long term are going to keep me healthy and uh, let me live as long as possible? So over the next couple months, that's what it, that's where it led and I kind of started modifying things from there. So I know you're from Philly, grew up eating everything, and then you marry a Cajun girl. How hard was that for you guys, you know, and what were those conversations like in the early days for between you and your wife? And, you know, did you, I mean, I'm thinking if, you, if you're if you used to eating meatballs and some of those other things, you may, you know, I know for myself, I was lacking some culinary skills needed. And so what, did, me. what did all that look like? I'm not a cook. When I was growing up, my mom uh, didn't want us in the kitchen, so I didn't learn to cook. Um, so I, I mean, I, I couldn't. I can make a spaghetti. I learned how to make my dad's spaghetti, and I can probably, uh, you know, my kids probably like, uh, you know, mac and cheese that I made. That's about it. That's that's the extent of my 
culinary skills, but uh, she, she, my wife has been instrumental in, uh, in changing, helping me change my diet because, excuse me, anyone that lives down here knows that food is part of the fabric uh, of what you do. Um, where I'm from in Pennsylvania, it's, it's different um, in that food is, is like a comfort. It's not really a social thing. Um, it's just, it's just what you do. Um, you know, it's the things that you love, but down here, uh, in, in Louisiana, specifically South Louisiana, um, people gather around food. So making that change, uh, is not easy down here. And I didn't, when I started last year and I changed and I started learning, I didn't immediately switch to being a vegan, but I did start phasing out a lot of the meat, things like that, um, as little as possible and kind of started putting more, um, plants into my diet, but I wasn't a, uh, I wasn't plant-based until this year. But as, as we went further along, uh, and I made the commitment to change, um, she was instrumental in kind of researching foods that she could make because she hasn't made the switch fully either. Um, she still will eat meat from time to time, but she eats a lot of the stuff that I eat. If she makes it, she thinks it's good. She'll eat it as well. Um, but she hasn't jumped, jumped in like I have. And my kids still eat stuff that's probably they shouldn't have. But whereas maybe a year ago, um, they were eating nothing but McDonald's nuggets and macaroni and cheese and hot dogs and corn dogs and all this stuff. We're, we're putting in more fruits and vegetables in the mix of their food. So we're slowly introducing these things that they really should be eating. We didn't want to just have them eating apples and lettuce, you know, right away. You know, I just, I couldn't do that. Um, when I didn't even know what I was supposed to be eating myself. So, um, I, I have never had a problem with jumping in um, when I'm dedicated to something, just like switching to uh, um, the Atkins type diet. Um, I could jump right into that uh, low carb and I could jump right into uh, a plant based diet um, because I was committed to it. I, I felt strongly about what it what it was going to do for me. So me jumping in wasn't a problem. And having my wife on board with helping me do that was was immense. So you know we we kind of sat down and figured figured out what kind of we started with what kind of fruits and vegetables I like to eat. We started there, and then we kind of started modifying. Well, we like these. What if I do this or that? Or would you like to try this? And so over the last you know six eight months, we've experimented with a lot of different things and found new foods that I didn't even know existed. Honestly. Um, and, and started incorporating those into what I eat on a daily basis as well. Yeah, going back to what you said a little while ago, I think sometimes, you know, it's easy to focus too much on perfection. But, you know, whenever you're, I don't know about for you, I was so far from anything even close to what I eat now that progress was what was key. You know, it was like if you look over the long term, those little bits of progress over a really long period of time add up to a really big change. But, yes. but if you look, you know, if you look at the small steps or where I was, you know, it, it looked, it looked like there wasn't, you know, there wasn't much of a change. Um, what, um, you know, is there anything that's changed for you that surprised you, whether it's socially, physically, emotionally, you know, within your family, in public, you know, or for yourself personally, is there anything that's, that's kind of taking you by surprise? Yeah, honestly, um, people are incredibly supportive um for a culture that's that you know crawfish season is huge and you know uh hunting season is huge and you know all these th different kinds of the year have their own foods attached to them um you know it's the, the, the this is the way the people live down here and to to be the one in your group that jumps out and says I don't need crawfish anymore. I don't need uh, steaks anymore. I don't need uh, bull crabs or sausage gumbo or, you know, all the stuff, you know, it'd be easier for people to say, you're crazy. That'll never work. You know, that's, I, I don't even know why you're trying to do that. 
but everyone, you know, my work family, my, my family here have been incredibly supportive. Um, I, I really, I've had a couple people, you know, kind of kid me about it and, you know, little joking remarks, uh, uh really it, on the whole, it's amazing that, uh, you can be the one person that steps out out of the you know the the food haze that people can get into and you know people are supportive of you in that and and they don't try to you know it's it's easy for people to try to bring you down i think people see that all the time and uh, uh it's been overwhelming um sometimes the the amount of support I, at work you know we'll have days where the the boss will buy pizza still and what you know if we know that that's going to happen or there's going to be a meal there special treats coming in someone will bring me a cucumber i mean something as simple as a cucumber or uh they i, I had a couple a uh, mom and a daughter that worked there bring me a watermelon one time because there were going to there's going to be candy or they were baking or something like that so there are people that are conscious of me just me specifically and they want me to be included so things like that um, it's really has been surprising um, in a wonderful way. And I'm hoping that them, you know, kind of being on board with me doing it just plants the seed, you know, and, and maybe a catalyst down the road for them to to kind of see that, you know, it's maybe not so bad. You know, Jason's able to do it, you know, and he's still surviving and doing well, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll, I'll try something that he's eating or something like that. But uh yeah, that, that for me, I think, has been the biggest shock is that everyone has been so on board with me doing my best as far as that goes. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so any kind of physical activities that you enjoy now? Are you still running? or? I, I'm running. Um, and I, ha- I joined a gym, the Thibodeau Regional Medical Center down the road just opened up a, an awesome gym. And uh, so I joined down there and, and – uh, I knew that I was going to have to kind of branch out from running. Running was going to get me far, um, but there are things that I could also be doing to increase uh, the health benefits of physical activity. And uh, so I, I do go to the gym as well now, but I, lo- uh, running is still my love as far as activity goes. Um, I run several times a week. Um uh, I have run races. I've, I've finished three half marathons. Uh, I had my first full in sight in February. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, uh, but I have a lot of support. Um, uh, it's it's just it's as far as physical activity goes. It's my time to focus on me and uh, I can run as, as long as I want to not, I mean, not literally, I can't run until I fall over, but if I feel like I want to do an hour's worth of running, I can do that. If it's only a 5k 30 something minutes, then I can do that too. But, uh, it's, it's time that I can invest in me and, and I go as far as, as I consider going and can push myself to go. Um, so yeah, uh, running, uh, will be there for me as long as physically it's there for me. Um, I've made so many friendships through running and, uh, you know, I was never a team sports guy growing up. Uh, so I've never experienced any kind of, uh, sports related, uh, highs and, you know, running races and finishing, finishing that first half marathon and this last one, which was really tough and, and kind of I've never had that feeling before of accomplishment or, you know, reaching a goal. And, uh, now you can, you know, in that situation, you can keep moving the goal. There's other things you can do a full marathon. And then there's ultras. If it comes to that, I don't, I mean, I'm not jumping into that. That just, some of that just seems insane to me. I, it's not in my world yet, but, uh, we'll see what happens with the full in February. But yeah, run, running is, is, uh, has just opened so many doors uh, as far as relationships go and passing on of knowledge and sharing of knowledge and the support system and things like that. Uh, you know, I really don't know what I would do without, you know, the support system that I've gotten from running. That's awesome. And I'm yeah. sure that you will do well uh, in February. 
Uh, we'll see. I, yeah. I have high hopes. Uh, I do believe I'll finish. Uh, how long it takes me, I don't know, but uh, I will. I'll finish it. Yeah, I'm sure you'll do well, and then by March you'll be thinking, well, what's what else could I do? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm also I haven't committed to it, but I'm looking at uh, going to Leadville. Oh. Uh, running the Leadville heavy half in June. Yeah. I've committed. Uh, it, it, that also is, again, is, is a step above even the, the marathon okay. for me. Uh, uh, I have a lot of guys kind of encouraging me to do that as well. And that's completely out of my comfort zone. Um, but those things kind of excite me, you know, the, the possibility of, of doing something like that, um, is, is what keeps pushing me and keeps, you know, keeps a hold of me and keeps me going. Uh, and doesn't allow me to kind of slack off. If I keep giving myself those goals in the future, uh, it keeps me motivated, you know, and I know based on that first long race I ever ran, you can't cheat on those things. Um, it's not 13.1 is no joke. And then 26.2 beyond that is even, is even more of a commitment. So, you know, it it doesn't allow you to cheat. Yeah. I'll look forward to seeing you Leadville. I'll be there. Oh, you're going. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a big group going. Yeah, uh, my wife will be there doing the heavy half, and uh, I'll be doing the full. And uh, we actually, we actually, um, hopefully by the time I post this, I will have made some sort of an announcement or something. But we actually, I rented a, a Airbnb that's big enough um, to have us kind of a little bit of a, a, a clubhouse of sorts and a place to cook. And so it'll just be kind of a community house for all the people who are coming I think nice. uh, Anthony Masiello is coming. Josh is coming. Tim's coming. Uh, uh, Dave Wiskowski better be there. Um, <laughs> and uh, along with, uh, I know I'm leaving a couple people out. Um, but, yeah, it should be a really good group. It should be fun. Um, yeah. It was a real pleasure last year to yeah, do it. I, and I saw uh, updates on that and things like that when Josh went. And, uh, you know, yeah. I saw his updates. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's – it's, it's still kind of out of my scope. Uh, I don't know what I would be getting myself into. Uh, running at elevation is completely different than running on a pancake, you know, in New Orleans. Uh, you know, there's no hills. So I'd actually have to find some hills around here to run up and down or some stairs or something. So, uh, but I have this, like I said, I have the support. Um, if it gets to that point, um, I know that the people are, I have the people um, that are willingly at my disposal to give me their, their, they want to dispense their ex- expertise and their experience. And, um, they want to you to share in those victories and those experiences. So, um, I look forward to it. I, I, I have a feeling it's, it's, it's pretty much a definite, I just haven't committed to it yet, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of the running thing. It's, it's just the community of, of especially guys that have been working of pounds um that being in that fraternity is is humbling and uh but i mean it's awesome i I don't know any other really term to to put on that but um you know we'll 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 see we'll see uh, come june um i i look forward to that challenge though yeah so what advice would you have for somebody who's at the beginning of their journey who's where you were you know, at the beginning and is trying to figure things out. Maybe they've gotten some, some news or they're just, you know, kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. What advice or what words of encouragement would you give to that person? Don't expect the change to happen all at once. Um, I think people can expect too much too soon, get discouraged, think it's not working and, uh, and then just bail. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, it's easy to, to not see the scale move if that's kind of what you're into. Uh, I don't weigh myself anymore. Uh, it's not, it's not part of victories for me anymore. Um, but if, you know, if you're a person that weighs yourself, you know, and you don't see the scale move, you think, oh, this is all for nothing. Um, don't expect it all to happen at one time. You know, if, if you get to 300 pounds, 400 pounds, you don't do that overnight. It's not going to come off overnight. So don't be overwhelmed and don't be disappointed that it doesn't all change overnight. Um, you know, it's set small goals and keep moving the finish line. I think I heard somebody say that, that, you know, on this journey, you can keep moving the finish line. It doesn't, you know, the goal line doesn't have to be static. You can keep moving it. So you can set a small goal. Once you get it, keep moving it. 
But, um, you know, yeah, the first piece of advice is, is don't expect everything to happen overnight. Um, make the small changes that will get you moving, get you moving forward in a positive direction, and then kind of build on momentum. Um, and then before you know it, it's, you know, huge changes happen. You just have to wait. You have to wait for those big moments. And they will come if you, if you stick to it. So, yeah. So piece of advice number one is is uh, be patient and don't expect everything to happen at once. And uh, the, the second thing is educate yourself. And that, for me, probably the biggest thing. Um, it, it's easy to fall into a fad diet, see these other people that have had success and think, oh, that's easy. I can I can do that. I can just, you know, stop eating carbs and eat a whole bunch of bacon and I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. And maybe you will, but what at what expense find out what expense um and if you go if you're looking at a plant-based diet what is it going to do to me how will it affect me how positively um you know education is key in this you have to know what you're eating and what it's going to do for you and and to you uh and i never knew that before before this change um I, I, I didn't know why uh, a low carb diet worked. I just knew that it had worked for me. Didn't know why. Didn't know what the food eating that I was eating uh, meant. Uh, what was in it? You know, you have to educate yourself on why you're making the change. If you're serious about it, you'll take the time, invest the time in finding out these things. Read. There's, uh, you know, a, a world of audio books that you can download and listen to. Uh, if you're not a reader, um, there's a wealth of knowledge uh, at the library, on the Internet. Um, there's blogs. Um, invest the time in yourself. Don't just take for granted that because you saw a post on Facebook or it worked for somebody on Instagram that it's going to be super easy to just drink this shake all the time and lose weight and, you know, you're going to do great. Um, why? Why are you going to do great? So, um you know, educate yourself is, is the key um, for me, at least for me. And if someone was starting on this journey and was asking me, that's what I would tell them. Um, find out what's going to work for you. And a plant-based diet may not work for everybody um, as far as what you're able to incorporate in your life. I would think, I would hope that it works for everybody. Um, but, I, you know, realistically, at least in my lifetime, I don't know that we'll ever see a, a plant-based planet um, but the more guys, um, that take that on and put out, um, their changes and the positive changes, why they're changing and, you know, what they're eating and why, and, and why I like to eat the foods that I do, uh, the more people that do that and, and educate these people, uh, I think the better it will be. So, um, you know, hopefully... Hopefully, at some point, somebody sees what I've done, and and people have already started asking me, kind of how how are you doing that, and you know what changes have you made, and I haven't had anyone based on me become uh, plant based, but uh, um, it's it's getting people thinking. So I mean, I think I feel like I'm making progress as far as that goes. So uh, as much education as I can get for myself and share, um, hopefully that that wears off to somebody else, and then they'll they'll pick up the education and find out for themselves. And then do you think there's anything that you could have said to yourself, you know, two years ago or so that maybe would have given you a nudge in the right direction or um, a little bit sooner? Uh, I don't know if anything would have convinced me, to be completely honest with you. I was so deep into food addiction and only caring about me that I wasn't I probably wasn't in the right place. If I was one of those times would have stuck that I lost weight. Um the, the past Jason was too selfish, I guess, um, to really to take in any kind of advice from anybody. Um, he was living life and, you know, loving uh, food and, you know, everything that made him feel good uh, food wise. Uh, you know, I would have I would like to think that if future present me went back and said, hey, if you were changed now, your life will get so much better so much sooner. Um, I would like to think that he would take the advice, but I, I had already, you know, been up and down and knew that I could be healthy if I wanted to, 
uh, I just wasn't in mentally, I wasn't in the right place to embrace it. You know, I know it was the picture that was the catalyst, but I don't really know mentally why it stuck this time. I'm not really sure. Uh, I just know that it did. And I'm, I'm thankful that it did, um, that I, that I was able to, you know, save my life, um, in time before anything disastrous happened. Um, so unfortunately, I mean, I, I wish I had those big words that I could go back and, or somebody that's there now and, and give that advice, but I was too selfish. Um, and I was addicted and I still am. I mean, food, food addiction is not easy to beat. And for anyone that's there or has been there, they know, uh, it's not easy to walk by a pizza when you've lived your whole life eating a pizza and say, ah, I don't want that. Uh, I just know that it doesn't work for me anymore and I don't need it. So it's not that hard for me just to walk by and say no, but that there's fat Jason still there. And he kind of pokes his head up every once in a while. He goes, man, that pepperoni pizza looks awfully good, but I know better. I know better now. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, Jason from two or three or five years ago, he wasn't ready. Uh, but you know, I praise the Lord that, um, you know, my heart was open to change and I had, I had the right people at the right time brought into my life to help facilitate that. Awesome. Well, and then yeah. lastly, where can people connect with you? Uh, I have a uh, Facebook, um, I, I don't post a whole lot to Facebook, but, uh, uh, Jason Harper or Kate, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. I've never connected to my own page. Um, but my name is Jason Harper, but I use K U T Z A A A as a tag name. Uh, so I guess either one of those, um, but I also have an Instagram and my Instagram is K U T Z A A A. Uh, you know, I post, um, food, food that I eat, um, you know, activities that I do. If I run, I'll post the runs and stuff like that. And people have, have asked me what I do and, you know, how I'm doing it. I've connected through a lot of people through there. So, um, you can find me on Instagram. Facebook is, is the two uh, best ways to follow me if you're at all interested in doing that. Awesome. Well, thanks yep. so much for the time and sharing yep. your story. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you around Louisiana. And I will yep. definitely look forward to seeing you on the starting line at Leadville as well. Yeah. I mean, the more people I get connected to, I, I feel like I'm almost obligated to be there. Yeah. So, I love that, though. I love that. So I appreciate you. It's, it's been wonderful. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Have a great day. Yeah.